Today, I'll walk you through the top three industries where data analysts or analysts in general who have great data analysis skills are crucial right now. And I'll also give you practical, actionable tips on what data portfolio projects you should create to gain a competitive edge when trying to break into these industries. For those of you who are new here, my name is Mo Chan and I work as a data and analytics manager and I have over six years of experience working in the financial services industry. And speaking of the industry I work in, finance and banking is definitely one of the top industries that relies heavily on data analytics. Think of fraud detection, risk management, and investment strategies. These are all processes that require the organizations to work with large amounts of data, or big data, as we call it nowadays. Big banks like JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, or Citi are always on the lookout for professionals with extensive data analysis skills. But it's not just US banks, of course. Banks across the world need analysts who can gather, clean, manipulate, and analyze data to solve business critical problems. And let me give you a project idea in case you want to land a job in finance. You could build a machine learning model to detect fraudulent transactions using historical banking transaction data. And here's how. Combine transaction and customer data with fraud labels. And by transaction data, I mean transaction amounts, timestamps, locations, and types of transactions. And by customer data, I mean age, account type, or transaction history. And by fraud labels, I mean labeled transactions indicating whether they are fraudulent or legitimate transactions. You could use this credit card fraud detection dataset on Kaggle, for example. You should focus on identifying common characteristics of fraudulent transactions. Create new features that may help improve model performance, such as transaction frequency, average transaction amount, and deviations from a customer's typical spending behavior. This process is called feature engineering. Then you would of course have to train and evaluate your model. Probably even when you think you're done, you should try and fine tune it just to see if you can make your model a little bit better. And if you want to learn the relevant data analysis skills to carry out the project I just mentioned, or any other data project for that matter, then the postgraduate program in data analytics by Simply Learn is definitely something you should look into. Simply Learn is recommended by Forbes, and this program is offered in collaboration with IBM. You'll learn through an applied learning model with real life projects across various domains using industry datasets from Google Play Store, Lyft, World Bank, and much, much more. Excel, SQL, Tableau, Power BI, Python, R. These are all tools that you'll learn how to use. Given it's almost year end now, there's actually a special new year offer where you can get a 20% scholarship on this data analytics program by Simply Learn. Just use the link in the description below and use the code MOCHEN20 to claim your offer to get 20% off. And let me just give a huge shout out to Simply Learn for partnering on this video. Moving on. Healthcare is another industry that certainly has so much data available for analysis. Just think of the healthcare data revolution in the form of electronic health records. That is a lot of valuable patient data. A lot. Companies like United Health Group and CVS Health use data to enhance patient care and reduce costs. A pro project tip. I can give you here is to complete a project on patient readmission analysis. Patients going back for more and more treatments that could have been avoided had the initial treatment been effective enough is clearly not a good thing. Here's what you could do. Combine patient demographics data with clinical data as your data sets to start with. By demographics data, I mean age and gender, and by clinical data, I mean lab results and data from electronic health records, for example. Find which patients are at high risk of readmission within a specific time frame post discharge, say 30 days. Find why these patients are at high risk and develop possible solutions that target interventions to improve patient outcomes and to avoid unnecessary hospitalizations. Depending on what data you're working with, 
you could come to the conclusion that the primary factors for patient readmission are incorrect dosages or failures to fill prescriptions, poor patient discharge planning, or complex patient needs. Think of someone who has multiple chronic conditions or very complex medical histories. These are just some possible reasons I listed here. Hopefully these give you a good idea on what data points you should be looking out for. And please remember, no matter what projects you are creating to include in your professional data portfolio, make sure to present it in a way that anyone can understand. Nobody wants to read through hundreds of lines of code or look at advanced formulas. In my own Ultimate Data portfolio, for example, I start every project of mine with a simple summary that focuses on the goal, the process, and the highlights of the project. Make sure you do the same or something similar to please. And last but not least, let me focus on the e-commerce and retail industry. Think of giants like Amazon or Walmart, who depend heavily on data analysts to optimize supply chains and personalize marketing. A lot of analysts in this sector analyze buying patterns to improve customer experience, and let's be honest, generate techniques and methods to make you buy more and more often. A great portfolio project that I would recommend you do in this space would be one focused on customer segmentation. A segmentation project is a no-brainer for me to recommend because proper customer segmentation allows businesses to create targeted marketing campaigns to improve customer satisfaction and customer loyalty and enhance customer retention amongst many other key business benefits. And here's how you can do a customer segmentation project for your data portfolio. You could use RFM analysis, which stands for recency, frequency, and monetary to segment customers based on their purchasing behavior. You can combine transaction, customer, and product data as your data sources. And by transaction data, I mean historical sales data, including customer IDs, transaction dates, money spent, and product categories or subcategories. By customer data, I mean demographic information such as age, gender, location, or account creation date. And by product data, I mean prices and product categories. Then you could do some EDA, which stands for exploratory data analysis, and analyze overall sales trends and customer purchasing patterns, and visualize key metrics such as average order value, total sales per customer segment, and maybe even seasonal trends in purchasing. Then you should calculate RFM scores for each customer. The R or recency score will be the days since the last purchase, the F or frequency score will be the total number of purchases in a given period, and the M or monetary score will be the total spending over a given period. All you have to do now is to create a composite RFM score for each customer and choose a clustering algorithm to group these customers into segments based on their RFM scores. Some standard segments would be high value customers, the ones with high RFM scores, low value customers, the ones with low RFM scores, new customers, the ones recently acquired, and at risk customers, low R score, but high F and M scores. Once you have all of this information, it's completely up to you how you want to present your findings and suggestions. A Tableau or Power BI dashboard to visualize your customer segments and their characteristics would be a great idea, for example. And I'm afraid this is the end of this video. If you watched this far, I'll assume you enjoyed this video, in which case you should definitely check out my website at mochen.info, where you can sign up for my free newsletter and access my data analysis resources. And you should also check out these videos right here. Thank you so much for taking just a little time out of your day to watch this, and I shall see you in the next one.